People have different reasons for traveling, but much of the time they fly to their destination to get there as quickly as possible. Ship travel is much slower than flying or driving in a car. To overcome the initial slowness of a ship through the water, you either have to reduce the bow wave by making the ship more hydrodynamic or provide enough energy to push the ship over the wave and onto the plane. This is similar to when an airplane breaks the sound barrier and produces a sonic boom, going through a bow wave of air in a sense. Water is much more dense than air and requires much more energy to be displaced, but at the same time, ships only have to worry about two dimensions, if they can go over their bow wave. However, the amount of speed and therefore energy needed for a large ship to push over its bow wave and reach the plane is colossal, meaning that such ships are far less efficient than a truck or plane. Modern ships are highly sophisticated, with navigation controlled from the bridge and vast engine rooms housing the machinery that powers the ships. So why can't ships travel as fast as cars and planes? A ship is a large floating vessel capable of crossing open waters, as opposed to a boat, which is generally a smaller craft. The design of ships employs many technologies and branches of engineering that also are found ashore, but the imperatives of effective and safe operation at sea require oversight from a unique discipline. When you put a ship in the water, it displaces an amount of water equivalent to the ship's own weight. If you put a 6,000 ton ship in the water, it moves 6,000 tons of water. Therefore the ship moves slowly, pushing hundreds of tons of water ahead of it. Ships have a reputation for being bulky lumps that move slowly around the world. Even a passage from Southampton to New York on modern ocean liners takes almost a week, traveling at an average of 20 knots. An airliner can do the same in a matter of hours. They have a typical cruising speed of 500 knots. Even cars go faster than ships, with a typical speed of about 60 to 70 miles an hour, equivalent to 52 to 71 knots. In terms of physical size, ships' engines are enormous. They are so big that the larger ones are typically known as cathedral engines. The Emma Maersk is powered by one of these. She's an E-Class container vessel that's 397 meters long and was the largest container ship ever when she was launched back in 2006. Her main engine weighs 2,300 tons and pumps out a whopping 109,000 horsepower. The typical car has about 100 horsepower, depending on the configuration you choose. At the extreme end, you've got F1 cars which can be pushing 1,000 horsepower. A typical 747 airplane engine is around the 150,000 horsepower mark. So looking at horsepower, it makes sense that planes are faster than ships, but ships are still slower than cars with much lower horsepower, so there must be more to it than just the horses. Four planes, take the Boeing 747. They come in at anywhere between 300 to 500 tons and are powered by four jet engines, as we discussed earlier, each engine having 150,000 horsepower, resulting in horsepower per ton of about 1,200. A car, we said, was around 100 horsepower typically, and you can safely assume that a normal car weighs between 1 and 2 tons, which means it might give you about 75 horsepower per ton. Now, coming back to the ship, it obviously weighs the most. A fully loaded Emma Maersk will tip the scales at about 200,000 tons. With her engines delivering 109,000 horsepower, the horsepower per ton will come in at around 0.5. Now we're getting a better understanding about the order of speed between the three vehicles. Planes are way ahead, cars come in second, and ships trail a long way behind. Planes experience air resistance and cars experience a combination of air resistance and friction with the ground, but ships move through water, a comparatively dense medium. This means they experience the greatest force against them out of the three. Drag is determined by the square of the speed. If you double the speed, you quadruple the drag. You can sort of assume that the force produced by the engine is constant. There are variations due to the water flow, but we can ignore those for now. If the engine produces more force than the resistance, the ship will accelerate. As she speeds up, the drag increases according to the square of the speed. 
Once the drag force matches the engine force, no more acceleration force occurs. The ship has reached the terminal velocity. So you can see that it's very difficult for ships to accelerate. Do you have a better idea now about why ships move so slowly across the sea? Let us know in the comments what you think. And don't forget to subscribe folks.